Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I wish to thank the organizers for inviting me for this, for giving this talk. Okay, so I'll talk about the Target A trial going over the 18-year journey between 1994 to 2012, where we have tried to move from a one-size-fits-all whole breast radiotherapy to a more individualized approach of risk-adjusted radiotherapy. This required a conceptual leap, a technological leap, phase two trials, randomized trials, some mathematical modeling, and translational research. So you have breast cancer. This is what I used to tell patients in early 1990s in Tata Hospital in Mumbai. And then the next question was, can you travel to the hospital every day for six weeks? And if the answer was yes, I would tell her we can preserve your breast. And if it was no, we would have to do a mastectomy because they would have to have radiotherapy for six weeks. Now that was in 1990s in Bombay, but it, I'm told by Dr. Michael Alvarado from UCSF that this happens here in San Francisco because people in the county hospital, patients don't want to travel every day to receive radiotherapy and choose a mastectomy instead. And this happens in Denmark, in Australia, in many other parts of the world. So that is the clinical reality. But what is the scientific rationale for Target? This started paradoxically in, a multi in the whole organ analysis of mastectomy specimens in which we analyzed where other cancers might be present when a single tumor was seen clinically and radiologically. And what we found is that breast cancer is frequently multicentric. So if you see the green dots, that is where all the multicentric cancers are present when the tumor is present only where the scar is. But paradoxically, most recurrences occur around the tumor as the red dots. And if they occur in other parts of the breast, they are at a similar rate as they occur in the other breast. So it did make sense to focus radiotherapy to the tumor bed. So this was a, the concept that we give radiotherapy only around a tumor and avoid radiating the breast and any other organs that it inadvertently does and finish radiotherapy immediately after lumpectomy under the same anesthetic. So based on this concept, we developed a new radiotherapy device and the target technique to bring this to the clinic. And over the last so many years, we have validated it in over 30 centers in more than 11 countries. So the technique, is a, involves a machine which is an electron generator and accelerator which accelerates electrons along this t tube and generates x-rays the, at the tip of this tube. There's a spherical applicator which is inserted in the tumor bed and it gives a uniform dose of radiation to the tissues immediately next to the tumor bed which are at higher risk of getting local recurrence. It can be run in a normal operation theater. And so we did the first case on 2nd of July, 1998. And that's how the patient lies on the table. That's the machine inside the breast. And that's the tumor bed. You choose the correct size of the applicator between 2.5 to 5 centimeters in diameter. And you insert it in the tumor bed. And make sure that you have got good, clean apposition of the tumor bed to the applicator surface. It can be done in a normal operation theater. The machine is mobile and it typically takes about 25 to 30 minutes to give the radiotherapy, and overall, about 45 minutes added to your operating time. It is different from the Elliott technique in that here the radiation is given from within the breast and does not require any dissection of breast tissue, whereas with the Elliott technique, one requires dissection between skin and the breast tissue and breast tissue and chest wall, which perhaps might be causing some deoxygenation of tissues and it may reduce, perhaps, the efficacy of radiation, which doesn't happen with target. These are soft x-rays. The volume of tissue receiving high dose is small, and the dose corresponds to the density of tumor cells. So it is not typical of a normal radiotherapy in which all the target volume gets all the dose, but as the number of tumor cells, the frequency and the density is highest near the tumor bed, and the recurrence rates are highest near the tumor bed, you get the highest dose there, and it reduces as you go further away from the tumor bed. So that's the tumor cell density, and that's how the dose reduces as well. The 
patient recovers very well after the operation. So we published how to do this in, back in 2002, the first results of the pilot data in 2001, the, and we published later on in 2004, 5, 6. An important point is geographical miss, which is when radiation to the tumor bed may be missing the target, and it is known to happen in many cases, although there are now methods of trying to avoid this. And of course, with target, you're giving it to the right place at the right time. And the time, the temporal miss, which normally occurs with any radiotherapy, is, we think, perhaps important. And the timeliness may be important because after wound, after wounding, there is wound fluid that collects in the wound. And this wound fluid, we found, when we put it on breast cancer cell lines, stimulates proliferation, motility, and invasiveness. But what was the good news is that if you take wound fluid in a patient who has received target, the wound fluid did not stimulate these cells. So if you see the cells moving around here, these are tumor cells stimulated by the wound fluid, normal wound fluid, whereas if the patient has received target, then that wound fluid doesn't stimulate the cells. And this was published in clinical cancer research in 2008, and it is perhaps because of a change in the tumor microenvironment that is induced because of radiation. So it doesn't just kill cancer cells, it also makes the environment not conducive to growth of tumor cells. So it may be superior. So in 1999, we wrote the protocol, gave it a name, and planned recruitment of 2,232 patients. This was the International Steering Committee and the Data Monitoring Committee. We had a broad inclusion criteria, age more than 45, tumors less than three and a half centimeters, and we excluded lobular cancers. Remember, this is not a randomized trial of localized radiotherapy versus whole breast radiotherapy. It's a trial of risk-adjusted radiotherapy versus one-size-fits-all radiotherapy. And one-size-fits-all radiotherapy is a standard treatment, and the experimental arm received a single dose of target and received external beam if postoperatively the patient was found to have additional risk factors that made us uncomfortable about this patient's local control. We expected this to happen in about 15% of patients, and we were right on target. It was a non-inferiority trial, and the patients could be randomized either before excision, and that was called a pre-pathology group, and then received their radiotherapy at the time of the lumpectomy. A second group who already had lumpectomy or excision could also be randomized, and for those patients, if they were randomized to target, they had the wound opened and given radiotherapy. The trial's original recruitment was 2232 patients, started in 2000, and in April 2010, we recruited from 28 centers in nine countries. These patients were generally good prognosis patients, but remember, 82% were younger than 70. They were not elderly patients, and 64% patients were more than one centimeter in size. The two groups were well matched in terms of their characteristics. There was no difference we found in the extent of surgery. There was no major difference in any complications, apart from a small difference that we found in the seroma needing aspiration, which was countered to some extent by increased radi radiotherapy toxicity in the EBRT group. And you probably have seen these results in which we found that the local recurrence rate at four years was very similar in the two groups. And when you see a Kaplan-Meier plot, you can see that the two lines almost overlap, and we feel we established non-inferiority with a difference of 0.25% and the upper confidence limit of 1.5% at four years. This was published in The Lancet in 2010. We received some very good editorial, and Lancet put it on their front page, saying that these are selected patients should get this treatment. And we looked at ASTRO guidelines to see if how Target behaved in view of the ASTRO guidelines, and we analyzed according to ASTRO guidelines. And lo and behold, only 700 patients were suitable according to ASTRO guidelines, and 911 were unsuitable. And how did the results of the trial fare based on ASTRO criteria? We found that the difference between the two groups was very similar in every one of the ASTRO groups. 
whether they were suitable, unsuitable, or cautionary, the difference between the two groups was very similar and small and cross zero. As you can see in this graph, this is the difference between target recurrence and EBRT recurrence, and in every one of the cases, it crosses zero. What is interesting is the pragmatic design of the trial in which in suitable group, hardly anybody received external beam, whereas 27% of those in the unsuitable group got external beam. So you know that about three quarters of patients in unsuitable group got only target, and overall, they achieved a similar local recurrence rate. So we believe that target delivers truly individualized radiotherapy, risk adjusted to the patient's risk factors. Professor Wenz, who is in the audience from Germany, their, their group has done quality of life analysis in which we find there is less pain, fewer breast symptoms, and significantly better patient satisfaction. We found that it causes less pain, and what is important in today's climate, that it saves money. Dr. Alvarado has estimated that in the next five years, if U.S. does not adopt Target, it would cost U.S. economy $1.4 billion. Now, that is up to everybody to decide whether that should be implemented or not. Now, this has received a lot of publicity in various newspapers, but most important one was in St. Gallen, when a panel of 52 experts suggested that in selected patients, partial breast irradiation, intra-bracket, intraoperative radiotherapy could be given a standard treatment. Now, what is an update for now? I'm going to give you a trailer and ask you to watch the space. We continued randomization after April 2010 because we were waiting and we were cautious while we awaited future follow-up. And the only ethical way was to continue randomization. So that was how it was in 2010. We continued accrual, and now we have 2,000, 3,000 451 patients and when the trial closed on 25th of June 2012. The data lock was on 20, so this is a large trial. One trial, two treatments, 11 countries, 12 years, 33 centers, 42,000 forms, and more than 1 million data fields. Now between 29th of June and now, I have slept for about two hours on an average in a day. And that is the number of patients. We have a large number of pre-pathology patients, which is the way it was originally intended. We have a good follow-up, 93% adequate follow-up. 1,000 patients have at least four years follow-up. 600 patients have at least five years follow-up. We are analyzing according to primary outcome of ipsilateral breast recurrence and survival, breast cancer survival and non-breast cancer deaths. We had hoped to present these data today, and I was very eager to present it. However, we are still digesting the analysis, and we do hope to present it in the very near future. Please watch the space. In the meantime, the target boost, when used as a boost, we feel that in young patients, local control is still inadequate, and our initial 300 patients pilot suggests that when you give the intraoperative radiotherapy as a boost, in addition to whole breast radiotherapy, the local recurrence rate is half of the expected, perhaps because of the reasons what I've given before. And therefore, in St. Gallen, people felt that this could be used as standard treatment already. But we believe that it might be superior, and therefore we are about to launch the target B trial to prove superiority of intraoperative boost compared to normal standard external beam boost. Now that the trial is closed, we are faced with the question, what do we do if I have a patient in front of me? And which patient should I choose? How do I select patients for target? In simple words, cautiously. They should be eligible for the target A trial, more than 45 years of age, suitable for breast cancer surgery, preferably grade one and two, and ER and PR positive and definitely tell the patient that you may add external beam in about 20% of patients if there are positive margins, lymphovascular invasion, nodes, or unexpected lobular cancer. Hopefully, we are moving from vision to reality of risk-adjusted radiotherapy, where low-risk patients will get target as the only treatment 
which may cover about three quarters of our patients that we see in the clinic, and high-risk patients get targeted as a boost, reducing their local recurrence rate. Thank you very much.